which takes us to um, item eight. And uh, you will have noticed the absence of the mayor and some of our presenters, uh, not least of which is Kiwi Rail and Wakotahi, all of whom are on a, um, a, a call with the Minister of Transport. So, <laughs> so we've had to reverse the order a little bit or change the order a bit. And that means that the, um, the first item up today is water care, um, which has been brought forward. So uh, we'd like to welcome uh, Steve Webster, Chief Infrastructure Officer at Water Care. Um, and we're going to receive an update on Water Care's services on its uh, capital program and some of its major infrastructure projects, which we, um, we haven't had for some time. So welcome, Steve. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this presentation is is reasonably short. Uh, it's we have a particularly large infrastructure program, so there isn't a there isn't a massive amount of detail in here. Uh, to be honest, I could present to it for hours if we really needed to about what we're doing. But so I've tried to um, try to condense this and give just give some examples of some of the things that we're trying to do. So we just move to the first slide. Ah, oh, right, I've got it. That's easy then. Fantastic. I just wanted to make sure that um, an understanding how, how we look at it, our, our business. We have, a, we have a very strong purpose in our business when the, when the water is healthy, the, the land and the people are healthy. We have some core, what we call our, what is our core business in water care. And our core business is, is reasonably simple, like many businesses are. Maybe complex delivering it, but, it's, um, the, the, but the core business is pretty simple. It's about our people and our customers, our capital program. Our operations, we need to better operate our assets to deliver the services that we have. We need to be financially stable, we need to understand our finances and drive value, and we need to have very, very strong partnerships. Now, our capital program sort of sits in the middle of this, and which we'll, we'll talk about today. Um, it's, it's linked to all the others as well. Our capital program delivers assets that our, that our operational team operate to provide the services that we need to provide to Auckland to, Auckland to operate today and to flourish into the, into the future. We, we are, the capital program is a significant portion of the cash flow of, of, our, um, of water care and therefore we need to be very financially, we need to be financially prudent and understand our costs when we're delivering our capital program. The only way we can deliver a multi-billion dollar capital program is to have really strong partnerships. And we have partnership models for delivering our capital program. And we have an enterprise model. We're just going out to the market again right now for, for our, all our renewals for the next five years um, as term contracts. And that's happening as we speak. Um, and we, so we, partnerships are very important to us. We are moving to a regime, though, where it's not just with our designers and our constructors. We are partnering deep into our supply chain. So all our major suppliers, you know, our, our membrane suppliers, our chemical suppliers, our pump suppliers, our electrical supply chain, we're, we're building very, very deep and strong relationships with them because what we can get from them is, is items around how we can reduce carbon, how we can reduce our emissions, how we can reduce our cost, how we can reduce the time flames, time frames in delivering our capital program. So these partnerships are very, very important to us. It's not something we do particularly well in New Zealand. It's my opinion, right? Um, but it's also, to be honest, it, it's talking to the industry, it's sort of the industry's view as well. We need to get better at, 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 at give, getting partnerships and understanding partnerships in our business. Can I have the next slide, please? And I think there was one just before that. Maybe it didn't make it. <laughs> okay, it didn't make it. So the next slide was actually around our asset management planning. Uh, just to, I guess, confirm, uh, our asset management planning is very similar to Auckland Transport. It's very similar to Auckland Council. Not a lot different. We have outcomes. We, we build an asset management plan. The asset management plan is a list of projects that we deliver to meet the outcomes of our asset management plan. Uh, and um, so moving on now to... The recent flood events, um, my understanding is you may be keen to understand where we're, where we're sitting with that. Um, we were impacted by it, as, as many other asset owners in Auckland were, and across the country. We have a, we've, stood, we've stood up a dedicated flood recovery team. That team integrates with the council's flood recovery team um, strongly. We, um, we 
we have a, a full database of everything, all the projects we've, we're going to need to be delivering over a period of time. Currently that stands at 187 as of a couple of days ago. Uh, those projects are in different phases. So some are in, or well, the majority have, finish, have finished first fix. So that's getting it moving again for a simple term. The second phase is final fix, so that's, that's a permanent fix for the asset. So if it's a slip, um, fix that asset, uh, remove the slip, bolster the slip, retain the slip. If it's a pump station, maybe may um, replacing control panels or switchboards or uh, upgrading some pump sets that are sitting in a pump station. And then we're going to move on to adaptation, and we haven't started that yet. Adaptation is where we have assets that we need to adapt for the future. Uh, we now know what happens when there's a, an extreme weather event in Auckland. And therefore, we need to design our assets, some of, some of these assets, to respond to that. Now, many of our assets, in particular pump stations, we can't move because they are at the end of a gravity main or a, um, a gravity system. Therefore, a pump station is where it is. And for us to move it would, would cost a significant amount of money and also co you typically cost us a lot of additional cost and operating cost to run those pump stations. So what we're doing is we're looking at these, and I'm using pump stations in an, as an example, we're looking at some of these pump stations that were inundated during the flood and we'll adapt them to the future. And that may mean changing some of the design of that pump station in situ, or it may mean just bolstering up the, the externals of the pump station to, to put a border in place so that we stop water egressing into the pump station when another event happens, because it will, and we know it will, I think we all know it's going to. So there's kind of those three phases, first fix, permanent fix, and then adaptation. We haven't started the adaptation yet, we're working through that right now. Next year we, we've, we believe there will be about an $80 million capital expenditure in, um, in flood response. Uh, that, that, is, that will be tempered by our ins insurance claims, which we're working with strongly with the council on. We have, a, we have a, a, a similar, well, we have the same insurance policies, so we're working with the council on how we can, council family on how we can access that insurance. Um, so it's $80 million minus any insurance claim that will come through next year. The next slide, please. In fact, I think I got my slides backwards. So I've already spoken to this, so we'll go to the next one. So this is a this is a um, a our capital investment for the next ten years. So the important thing with this slide is not the graph; it's the ten years. We plan a rolling ten-year capital program. We plan an AMP for twenty to thirty years. In fact, we we plan for fifty to one hundred years. But our capital program, we we roll a 10-year cycle. And we do that because if we don't do that, we will not deliver the value we want out of this capital program. If we have a short-term focus on a capital program, you get short-term results. You get high cost, high carbon, you, you, um, you get less, you know, you, less ability to develop people in the marketplace, develop our own people, develop our contractors, develop our consultants. So we, we, we plan our infrastructure program on a 10-year rolling plan. And that's something we do every single year. We just roll it out for another 10 years. While we have processes which we have a three-year LTP and a three and an AMP that gets updated every three years, we're always projecting ahead for that 10 years, the delivery for 10 years, so that we can see it coming, we can, we can, we can develop those real relationships with, and partnerships with our supply chain, because they're not really interested in one year or two year or three year. The only way they can they can get better and invest is to understand what's coming for the next 10 years rolling. So, so for Watercare, that's, and for any infrastructure owner, that's really important. That's the other key point of this particular, the graph itself, is the bottom orange line is a central interceptor, large project. It's coming off, you know, over the next few years, it'll be, it'll be completed, and, um, and, but you can see our total capital program continues to climb. So to put it into, into, into a perspective. In 2027, we're going to be delivering, our capital program has $1.4 billion sitting in it. Um, and that's what we need to deliver for growth, for resilience, to, to improve services and to renew assets uh, in, in Auckland, to, to allow Auckland to continue to grow and thrive. Uh, 
1.4 billion, probably 96%, 95% of that is infrastructure. So the other 5% is computers and, and other aspects, office equipment and things that, and equipment for our lab. But the majority of that is infrastructure. Pumps, pipes, um, reservoirs, meters, and treatment plants. To put that in perspective, the central interceptor gets a lot of press. Okay? It's a big project. It's 1.1 billion. It's over six years. In a few years' time, we're going to be delivering the equivalent to a central interceptor every year. Uh, so that's what we're gearing up for as an organisation. And that's why we plan for 10 years. Because we have to. You can't do this reactively. You've got to, you've got to plan for a full 10 years. Moving on to the next slide, which is the central interceptor. It is a mega project. It is a large project. Um, it's a big tunnel. It's well, not as big as CRL, of course, um, but it's big in our world. Um, it's, it's not just a tunnel, though. It's multiple shafts, as you can see on the diagram. Those orange dots are each one of those are the shafts. Some of those shafts are 90 metres deep. Um, it, is a, it is a complex and extensive program. Uh, the blue line for the tunnel from the bottom, from Mangere through to Keith Hay Park, you can see we're nearly at Keith Hay Park. Um, tunneling's going particularly well. Um, the other blue line on the left-hand side, where just by the way, which says New Lynn, that's one of our link sewers, virtually complete. Um, another link sewer at the top there on the, um, up at two-thirds of the way, three, well, three-quarters of the way up. It's just about, we'll be starting pretty soon. Um, and then we'll just continue the, with the tunnel right through to... Um, Grey Lynn. It was originally going to Western Springs, we extended it to Grey Lynn. We've now extended it further to Point Erin. And this is a, a fantastic, fantastic example of utilising an assets and infrastructure assets or equipment and plant and, and people to, um, to roll a program on and on. So we're, 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 we're moving out to Point Erin and that's part of the Healthy Waters Water Care Joint Western Isthmus Program that we're working on together to reduce the overflows into the harbour. Um, it's part of a, a, another multi-billion dollar project or program of works, and this is a, this is a decision we've recently made to, um, to extend the tunnel, the tunnel from um, Grey Lynn to, to Point Heron. Um, that pro Western Isthmus program's going well. We're working very, very closely with Healthy Waters. In fact, it's a great relationship, and it's, and it's, um, it's, it's starting to really hit its straps, and we're planning now the whole of the Western Isthmus um, delivery. We've been planning it for a while. We're now, we're now starting to let um, to, to get consents and letting start. We will be letting contracts very soon. Um, that photo is a recycled water plant. Uh, that's a plant that has been developed by the Central Interceptor team. So this is taking wastewater from Mangere and re and treating it, and it'll, it's currently being treated to non-potable use. It's being used in, on the project. It will be used on the project. And ultimately, that, that we'll, we'll, we'll add some more plant to that and we'll be able to produce potable water out of it. Now, this is not water we're going to inject into the system. Uh, it's, only, it's, um, it's, it's our start of we're, we're, you know, our next water source, which is highly likely to be, which will be, recycled wastewater. But that's in a, a number of decades before that happens. So we need to start on the journey and really get to understand it. So the central interceptor have... have agreed to and have developed and you know using international expertise this plant and it's now up and running so if you ever want to go and have a look please do so um, it is our future yes. our Auckland future it's at Mangere treatment plant next slide please just some examples of projects um, this is part of Lucy Moore Park pump station part of a, a, a transfer tunnel that we're putting in place um, a reasonably reasonable sized tunnel, five kilometres, I believe, of tunnel. That's about a third of the central interceptor length. Um, that's going from, from Walkworth through to Snell's Beach, our new, or Snell's wastewater treatment plant. It's a tunnel. It's a tunnel, yep, from um, Lucy Moore Park. Uh, it's um, part of circa 350 million we're, we're um, investing in Walkworth. Um, we're investing, we're not just investing in Walkworth for growth. Um, we had to. We needed to replace our wastewater treatment plant. So we we're and the next slide shows that um, a Snell's Beach wastewater treatment plant. We're building a new treatment plant there. Um, we needed to, as part of our new consent, uh, which which helps to clean up, which will clean up the Maharangi River. Um, we have an ocean outfall which we've already built. Um, the new consent meant we couldn't we couldn't 
our discharge into the Maharangi River, which is absolutely the right thing for us to be doing when we're discharging in an ocean outfall. Uh, and we are building, so we're building this tunnel and we're building a wastewater treatment plant at Snells. So a, a significant investment in that, in that northern area, northeast area. Um, there's some data in there I'm not going to go through, and this is the Snells wastewater treatment plant, which connects it all up. So from this plant, it goes to the ocean outfall, and that, that transfer pipeline from Walkworth, um, tunnel from Walkworth, ends up at this treatment plant, and, will be, and all the waste from that Walkworth area will be treated through this new treatment plant. Now, that treatment plant is a new technology, is, is you know, advanced technology, the, um, the, the, the discharge effluent is of a very, very high standard, uh, and it is, it is our new standard for treatment of um, wastewater in, in Auckland. Now, the next slide, please. So one thing I didn't mention earlier is um, part of our capital program is we have a vision of 40-20-20. We are looking to reduce our carbon, um, built carbon, by 40% um, from from what we, how we were building in 2018, 2019. Um, we're looking to reduce, we're driving to reduce our cost of our program by 20% and, and the majority of that savings built into the capital program. And we are looking to improve health and safety and wellbeing 20% year on year of anyone that's involved in building our infrastructure. That's not just water care, so that's all our contractors, all our designers and all our subcontractors and supply chain. This is an example of, of one of the successes. We've got a number of successes of delivering 40 2020. Um, there was a, a pipeline due for um, to be built between the Ardmore treatment, water treatment plant and the, the Redout Road reservoirs. The Redout Road reservoirs are a very important asset for Auckland. Um, a large percentage of Auckland's water comes through those Redout Road reservoirs. Um, we had pipelines going from the Ardmore treatment plant that we were struggling to maintain because we didn't have the resilience in those pipelines. So the, the strategy was to build a new pipeline. We re-looked at that strategy. Um, There's already three pipelines there. We re-looked at that strategy and said, well, actually, we don't need to build a new pipeline. What we can do is we can provide interconnection between the current pipelines, and that allows us to shut um, portions of each one of those pipelines down and then, therefore, we can maintain them, therefore, we can provide the resilience we need. Um, that was a $60 million saving on a $122 million project, um, greater than 70% embedded carbon saving, and the, the, um, the, the health and safety savings associated with this are, if, if you look at health and safety as, as a linear relationship with hours worked, which it typically is, uh, we are reducing the hours worked on this, this project by about 70%. So we've, we've reduced the possibility of an injury or a fatality on this project by, by a significant number. And that's what we're driving at with our 40-2020 vision, is to do exactly that. We want to do this across all our projects, as many as possible. We will have projects in our AMP, and we're, already, we're starting to identify them, that we don't think we need to build. Uh, so that, that, that's a 100% reduction in carbon and a 100% reduction in cost. Now, there's not many of those, of course, because our AMP is pretty well defined, but we, we are looking now and we, we believe we will find some projects that we, we won't need to build. Um, so that's, that's the, really the embodiment of how you can reduce carbon and reduce cost. we go to the next slide. The Pukekohe Wastewater Treatment Plant was um, opened on the 3rd of May um, with a blessing. Um, this plant is an example of, of our, new, uh, our new, the way we treat it, it, you know, wastewater now and the level of treatment we have. This was in, um, in discussion with, with Mano Whenua and Iwi. Um, we, our original concept for Pukekohe um, didn't meet the expectations of the community in Iwi. And, um, and looking back on it now in hindsight, rightly so. Right? We, um, we needed to get better. And so we we put some new technology into this treatment plant, which is a similar technology we'll now be using for future treatment plants, which makes an enormous difference to the, um, the treated effluent that's discharged into our environment. And that was in con consultation and discussion with our community in Iwi. And it has set a new benchmark for us. That does cost a bit more money, but ultimately it is the right thing to do. Absolutely the right thing for us to do. So very, very proud of that treatment plant. It doubled the capacity. Um, unfortunately, we are going to have to continue to 
<laughs> grow the capacity, or not unfortunately, it's fortunately, I guess, of the Pukekohe treatment plant. So there will be further projects on the, um, coming for the Pukekohe treatment plant. Next slide, please. Just a couple of photos. Um, Left-hand side is Myringi Bay. We're building a new pump station there. We had an open day. We run a number of open days on our projects. Um, Central Interceptor is, is, has very, very successful open days. It has a lot of public interest. Uh, and it's part of our, our, our partnering with the community. So the, really so that the community, community can understand what we're doing and why we're investing and what benefits they are going to get. So, you know, it's about the outcome, it's not about the inputs. Um, so, very successful. Um, they, they are always successful and they're usually oversubscribed. The right hand side is the Helensville um, wastewater treatment plant. That wastewater treatment plant ultimately needs to move because sea level rise and where it is. Um, but we needed to do some work on, we had a, some compliance issues with it, so we needed to do an upgrade, a temporary upgrade on it. All this equipment can be reused, by the way, it'll just get lifted and shifted. Um, it's an example of the digital journey we've been on. We've, we've, um, we've moved dramatically over the last three years in our digital journey for construction. And that journey reduces our costs, reduces the time of construct, redu it, it improves the ability for our, our, our constructors to actually deliver on time. Uh, and we're pushing very, very hard to digitise everything. We're, we're moving towards having digital rehearsals of all our construction. Which is the one you're lifting? Pardon? Which is the one you're lifting? No, it, it, oh, sorry, we, we can lift and shift it. So we've, we've built it on the... We've upgraded the treatment plant at Helensville because we had a couple of compliance issues on it. So we, we invested some money to, to upgrade that, to, to meet, meet compliance. We can, lift, we can lift all of that new plant up and shift it somewhere else and reuse it somewhere else. So it's not, it's not a wasted investment. It's an investment we will utilise somewhere else. It's a standard technology. It's a technology that's used, interna inter well, starting to be used internationally. It's called an MABR. Um, that's the, that is the biggest um, installation in the world. Uh, of, of an MABR, so it's a, it is a technology that's beginning to get traction, very, very high quality treatment, and, um, and we've, we've, we've built the, the, largest, the largest installation so far in the, in the globe. Uh, but it is, it's, a, it's the way of, it's a new way of um, for treating this type of waste in New Zealand. So, so that's gone particularly well, that treatment plant. We needed to move pretty quickly on it. Um, we, we, um, we, we partnered up with one of our partners, Fletcher Construction, and a designer, and we built that um, from a, that was a cost reimbursable um, build, not a, not a lump sum build, and has gone particularly well to budget and to plan for a fast track project. So we're very, very proud of what we've done there. I think that may be it. So any part I. Right, thanks very much, Steve. Very comprehensive presentation. Uh, we've got a few questions here. First from the Water Care Liaison Councillor, Councillor Turner. Thank you. Very interesting. Three questions, a couple of parts to them. You're reaching really deep back into your relationships, way down the supply chain. Does that mean you're reaching over present relationships to suppliers and you know cutting those contracts in in pieces? You know, is, are you reaching overseas in those supply relationships? We we have a number of supply chains that are, that are international supply chains. So we, yes, we do that. As a matter of course, we are reaching beyond what the what what we have typically done with our contractors and our designers. Yes, so we'll um, as opposed to our you know our, our contractors supplying some of the gear, we we are reaching into those supply chains and really getting to understand them. In some cases, we are buying the equipment ourselves, um, and the, and the reason we do that is because that that enables us to have that relationship with that supply chain, and we can then access their um, their, their low energy um, offerings, their, their carbon reduction offerings, and and their their innovation that they bring, and and you know we can we can make a decision as a client whether we want to take a risk on that or not. Generally, a contractor won't do that, because we ask them to to give us a fixed lump sum, and we're very rigid about our time frames. Therefore, risk taking for a contractors, they 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 sometimes quite often don't have the same ability as we have to take a risk on something. I'm just aware that uh, Cast Iron Pipe Company in New Zealand is closing because their major, their major customer is Watercare. Um, 
I just wonder, council contracts have to have social requirements in them. I just wonder if water care has the same, has the same requirements on them to have a social conscience. Yes, we do, but we, we also have a co very strong cost conscience. And, um, and I, mean, it's a, I, I can't Thank really you. talk about that particular instance yeah. because it was a long negotiation. But, um, um, just, you're replacing 70% of your labour and hours on a project but what are you replacing it with? How are you, how are you delivering? So that, that, um, that original project was to completely, um, well, to build a new pipeline from Ardmore through to, to Reservoir, to, to um, Readout Road, the Reservoir's a Readout Road, very long pipeline. Um, that, that meant going through paddocks and streets and, and, um, and, and you know, and properties. Uh, the, what we've done is instead of having to build a new pipeline, we've interconnected the, the pipelines that are currently there because there's multiple pipelines already there. The reason we were looking to build a pipeline is so that we could, we could improve the resilience of the current infrastructure. Um, and, and the resilience was fundamentally how we could maintain the current infrastructure. So we're not building a new pipeline, we're just building some interconnections between... So pipelines. the 70% reduction is actually under speaking what was wanted in the first place. No, so we, we get the same outcome. We get the we get absolutely get the outcome we were driving towards. We're just not building a pipeline. Okay, thank you. Last question. This whole presentation has it been duplicated with entity A because all this well well why why are we talking about ten year funding here when, you know, our relationship between council and water care, you know, is up in the air. So so I know there's movement about where water care could be going, is this question about all this funding having a, a, a parallel universe, a bit running parallel with what it could be in 12 months' time? Well, ultimately, the funding that Entity A um, provides is is up to the new new Entity A and DIA. They're working through their models right now, and that'll tell us what, what that, that will effectively define the price pass and the and the and the capital. Availability, we are not stopping. We we can't we um, I, we can't change our program and just decide we're going to plan for a year. So we're just continuing to plan for ten years. If if something changes with Entity A, we'll change our plan. But right now we're just planning for ten years. No, sorry, the question wasn't was it changed with Entity A. It's just if what you're trying to do for ten years is as and is as important to Entity A as it is to us. Correct, right now. I can't speak for into the A, but my assumption is yes. Okay. yes. Thank you. Simpson? Yes, look, thanks very much for that presentation. I think you've got a huge um, growth program. It obviously peaks at uh, 2031, and 96% of it is for growth, so that's great. But look, my question, you know, for Aucklanders is right now. So how would you characterise the current state of your networks after the, what is it, five now rain events? And are there still major concerns with any of the plants or pipes and how vulnerable, vulnerable are we are to any further events, for example, you know, this year? Uh, so where we're vulnerable, um, well, not vulnerable, where we've got, where we've got Real concerns. Um, Murawa is a real concern to us. We, you know, we've got a treatment plant there that is um, gone. Uh, we're still pro providing water, but it is a temporary solution. So that's a, that is a real concern for us. We need to we need to assess what we're going to do there, and if we're going to rebuild there, where we can rebuild. Um, you know, we need to supply water to Murawa. I mean, we have to continue to. Do. So that that's probably a, our current real real issue. You know, single issue. The remainder of our the, the works that we're doing, 187 projects, um, we'll just work through them and they'll all be, they'll all be done. Uh, with respect to are we still vulnerable? Yeah, we are still vulnerable in some of our, our pump stations because we haven't had a chance to adapt them. So if we have if we have another rain event like we had in earlier this year, we will get inundated again. Uh, um, but I think we could say that for many, many assets in Auckland. We, it is going to take a number of years to bolster and and to adapt to some of those assets, uh, and we during that time we just we just run the risk that it'll happen that that we'll get inund inundated again. We've got a very very 
very structured and rigid incident response process, and we, we enacted that during the, the, the recent rainfall events, um, and we were able to bring, bring the majority of our assets online very, very quickly. Um, Uruguay, unfortunately, is not one of them, but we have been able to supply water. Yes, no, that was, re that was really good, the way that you kept fresh drinking water going. But one, one more follow-up question. So are you saying by 2031, when you've done these big projects, that we will be quite future-proofed for any major events? Is that, uh, so you, is it just capacity that you're looking at, or is it capacity and um, ability to withhold storm events? Yeah, so, so it's both capacity um, resilience and adaptation. So, yes, with the, that investment allows us to adapt a number of our assets. Um, we, I know, we can give you an, an, an example of one we haven't got a solution for yet, but we're, you know, we're working towards it. And Mungary is a classic. You know, it's, it's right at sea level. We've got a very, we've got a major plant there. You know, what's what's our answer to that? We will have that answer soon because um, we have multi, there's multiple there's multiple solutions for it. Um, so we, we don't have all the answers, but yes, we will have, we will be resilient. Can we guarantee we're going to be 100% resilient to any event that comes? No, I'm sorry, I can't do that. Right, but, but our resilience will improve, improve significantly over the next 10 years. And how old was Murawai? How old was that? How uh, old was Murawai because it failed? How old was that? Was it really old? The plant itself? Yeah. I, I, I can't answer that question. No, I don't know. Oh, was yeah, it? so it's, it's pretty old. Pretty old. Pretty old. Okay. <laughs> yes. Please say no. Councillor Philip Island. Good at you. Tēnā koe, Stephen. Ngā mihi ki a koe moto kōrero. Just thank you so much for your comments. Uh, firstly, I just wanted to say congratulations on the uh, Central Interceptor team with the e-trucks. Thank um, you. Well done in regards to that. My question is similar to uh, the Deputy Mayor's and that is around the resilience for any weather event. So most of the PowerPoint we've seen is around floods, the cyclone. Your comment around whether we get an extreme heat event, um, that is, is the part I, my question is, how resilient do you think we will be in the event that, uh, that occurs? Kilda, thank you, Chair. Uh, are you meaning a, a drought? Well, yeah, yeah. definitely heat, drought, you whatever you want to call it. Yes. The resilience. Wow, well, that's, <laughs> that's that's why I, 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 I thought, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't want to say drought because of what happened. I, that's why it was a heat, yeah. extreme I mean, yeah. heat event. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so extre extreme heat, short-term events really don't, wouldn't impact our, our system at all. Um, I mean, we, we may have a few electrical issues and, and supply issues, but in general, that won't have too much of a concern. It's a long-term heat events that will that really start to impact us because it's, it's water supply. Uh, now, after the last, well, after um, the last drought, we built some more resilience, um, um, and that, and you know, we, we built the Waikato 50 plant, which provides some resilience during during drought, so we can we can extract more water out of the Waikato. We've recently, um, re well, gained a further consent from the Waikato, so that gives us the ability to to um, to extract some more water from the Waikato. So last time we're going back, though, make that really clear. We've made it very clear to everybody. Um, we that consent also gives us a, a better ability to to work through the summer period. The old consent reduced our ability to to take during the um, summer summer events or during, when the river was below a certain level. We now have more, the ability to take more water. So that gives us more resilience during a drought process. Um, we don't have any more dams. You know, so if there is a drought, we don't have any more dams. You know, our, our, we are we will be we will need to go to our aquifers and to our and to the and to the Waikato. Um, what I can tell you right now, though, is we are 99.9% .9 full in our, <laughs> in our reservoirs, and um, and this the summer coming, even though it's a fair way off, um, is we're very very confident about this, this summer coming. Kia ora. thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Philippine, for that uh, positive feedback, and I confirm my tanks running at 99.9% uh, <laughs> retention rate at the moment too. Councillor Walker, could you finish uh, off the question? Yeah, so, so I've got a question around um, multiple um, wastewater overflows that are occurring around Auckland at storm events, um, at pump stations, but also in particular when manholes pop 
and often these are on private property. So this is, this is happening now on a regular basis. Can one, those locations be identified? Two, is it possible to have a maintenance program so that instead of those property owners having to get in touch with you, and sometimes it's difficult for someone to come along and clean it up, and bear in mind this is wastewater we're talking about, so parts of their properties are being contaminated. So two, can there be a regular clean-up proposition within your maintenance scheduling? And three, is it possible to have some signage at the particular beach or in the particular vicinity? Because these are health hazards. The hazard exists on the property and then it exists in the stream or, or the like. So three questions there. Thank you, that are all related. And there's some immediacy around this because I'm, I'm getting it in the neck from people around this. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's been particularly prevalent in the last months. Right? We've, we have had a, a significant number of wastewater, you know, wet weather overflows. Um, make, I do want to make it very clear. They, these are not dry weather overflows. So these are not overflows of raw sewage. These are overflows of of an inundated system that has both stormwater and sewage on. Right? So um, can we identify them? We, 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 we know where the majority of these overflows are um, because we have a history of them. So yes, we do identify them. We know where they are. So our, our operations team and our, our infrastructure team understand where the overflows are. Occasionally, a new one arrives. Um, and, I, and I can't tell you whether how many or whether there were any new ones during the recent flood event, but my suspicion is there probably was. Uh, something we hadn't seen before because of the, just the amount of rain. So yes, we can identify them. Maintenance, the, the, the current way we operate is if, if we, we, where there's um, engineered overflows, after an overflow event, we go, we go and clean up and, and review it and look at it and make sure that it's operating correct in a correct manner. The, um, the manholes that, that do pop, and they do pop, we know they pop, um, we, don't, we don't have a... A, a, a structured maintenance regime because we don't actually know where they're going to happen. So, um, so we do rely on reports coming in, and, and the public is very, very good. Uh, the public, the public inform us on a regular basis if something happens, and and we got you know we got new, numerous notifications during the, the recent storm event. So our our way of operating there really is to go and clean those up as as they occur, because there's. So many manholes in the city, and and um, and, and not that, not that every manhole pops because they don't. It's only a small percentage. Um, the, the cons you know a regular a, a maintenance program would mean you know we we would have to know well we have to know where they are, which ones have popped. So that that would be quite difficult to do. So we 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 do rely on a, a more of a reactive. And, and do you accept responsibility because I know of people that are being messed around, frankly, and this is happening now on an ongoing basis. So when there's a storm, their manhole pops, the sewage floods their property, um, they've got to get in touch with water care, um, and sometimes they get messed around, and they don't want to have to do it because it requires expertise. Yeah. Um, look, I, I, all I can do is apologise to anyone who have messed around. Um, and if we have, we, we should absolutely take ownership for it. And if, we, if we're not responding, we should take ownership of it. Right, I think that's a, a pretty emphatic response. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Steve. So, so that's the end of the questions. So we, we, we have a recommendation uh, before us just to, to, to receive the update from Water, Water Care. So we've got Councillor Baker moving it, seconded by Councillor Fletcher. Does anyone want to, to talk to that? I, I think it's a pretty comprehensive review there of uh, Water Care's activities. No, so uh, it's been moved, it's been seconded. All those in favour? Right. Uh, against? Uh, carried. Thank you very much, Steve. Appreciate your input here today. Um, I, 